Sure, they invented they invented the pump and dump. And and if you look in third world countries, first world countries, they'll spend a decade getting their prime minister, their president, their finance minister in. In South America, in Asia, in Europe, I mean, it's always the same. This is a criminal crew. And I think them freaking out on you coming out and saying, hey, this is predatory, being honest about it. I mean, it was like saying, oh, my gosh, you, know, you mean fish swim in the sea or, you know, two plus two equals four. I mean, it was the height of ridiculous. And for weeks, a week and a half, is he real? Is he real? When they could have just called you, we went and looked it up. They tried to say you were one of these yes men or something. When you were simply right. stating that the sky is blue, that birds have wings, uh, that, uh, you know, the, I, I, I mean, it's just too amazing. Now, let's get more into this. Why specifically are you saying, because I agree with your analysis, but from your own research, why does Goldman Sachs rule the world? And then, what are some of the strategies uh, or gambits uh, th that uh, people can use, that the establishment's using, uh, to profit from the engineered downturn? Because I know if the general public profits from it, that could actually screw up their actuaries and, and, and could actually help in the end uh, if we just don't cookie cutter when they say buy and hold it while we slit your throat. Uh, if people actually learn what you and others have learned, uh, then the magicians can't screw us. Um, yeah, I wish that second point could be true. Uh, I'll come to that point in a second, um, Alex. As to, the, as to the first one, as to why I said it, uh, again, this is something I believe to be true. I, it's something, I mean, to be honest, it doesn't something that interests me that much. I don't think of it too much about what Goldman Sachs is up to, but uh, as, as to why I said it, I mean, here's one good example. As you yourself know, Alex, as, as many people may, may know, uh, you know, the, a lot of ex-Goldman Sachs employees work in the government in the United States. Uh, I've already mentioned a few days ago, I was in Ireland and I mentioned uh, on a show that uh, Henry Paulson. This is a guy who was the former CEO of uh, Goldman Sachs. Of Goldman Sachs. He, yeah, yeah, he gives himself banker was, bailout money and, and then gives himself his own waivers. You're talking about the revolving door. Please continue. That's right. I mean, this guy was the architect of the bailouts, and this guy then was funneling all this money to his, uh, you know, to his cronies like Robert Rubin and John Taines of Merrill Lynch, and you know, they're basically making other. Uh, guys in the city rich through bailout money. Um, and, you know, it, the, the fact is the relationship between the banks and the government is so blurred uh, it, 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 that it's not really clear who is the puppeteer and who is the puppet. But people can make up their own minds about that as to who rules the world. And I, I, I'm... Well, it's, it's like an inbred family. I mean, it's a revolving door, as you just said. So it isn't the government or the mega banks that, that run it. It's it's like two Siamese twins. I mean, it's 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 like it's like a breed. That's right. uh, I mean, it's it, 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 these people do even intermarry, and so I mean that's what's happening uh, right here. How do we going stop it? Yeah. Well, sorry. No. Go ahead. Go finish yeah. your point. Going to your second point. Going to your second point about how the public can get on the game. That's the problem. You see, the problem is whenever people get on any game, it's too late. You see, that's why it's called the herd effect. The, the herd, uh, I know it's an ugly word to use, but that's the truth. By the time the masses get on the game, it's too late. That's because the, the reason is the masses rely on the wrong kind of information. Yeah, there they watch CNBC, but that's my point. If you watch Infowars.com, I'm not tooting my horn. You're going to be years ahead. No, I'm serious. You're going to be years ahead, and you are not going to be in the herd. I agree by the time the general public figures it out, Gold will be at 5,000, or by the That's time, right. you know, things like that happen. I mean, but I'm not talking about the herd. I'm talking about the inside baseball we're here dis discussing. Yeah. Well, as far as what, uh, as far as what the institutions are up to, um, the, the point is actually, I mean, I don't really... I don't really care what those guys, uh, I, I, that's not my, that's not the way I look at the markets. I mean, uh, I don't do any kind of insider trading or anything like that. I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have that kind of information. Uh, what I do is the, the legal way of trading and it's the next best thing to insider trading. Um, so I, you know, uh, for me, trading is trading off the charts and, uh, using as many tools as I have in my access to be able to, uh, discern what the insiders are up to. Okay. So, uh, you, you know, that that's as a trader, you know, uh, if, when you're trying to make an income from this and when you're trying to be able to make money from this, you can't really, um, 
hope you're going to get some inside tips, you need to use your own skills. You need to use your knowledge of how the market works and uh, your analysis of the markets uh, to be able to make money. Uh, and I'm putting it in layman's terms. You know, I'm not going to technicals on this. You know, understand. So uh, I hope that makes some sense. Uh, no, no, that here. makes total sense because any army can put out disinformation about their movements. But if you can visually identify the real movements and not the decoy movements, you can right. then get a general image of what's happening. Well, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example, Alex. See, before all this technology uh, came into action many years ago, 20, 30 years ago, these institutions, the smart money, the funds, they could do things and they could hide their actions. Nowadays, they can't do that very easily. They might be able to a little bit, but they can't do it because technology is now advanced to the point that whenever these big guys make any decisions, make any, make, when, when, whenever they're making any kind of uh, uh, shifting of money from one thing to another, they leave trails behind. You know, they leave um, footprints behind. And if you know how to follow those footprints, if you follow those trails, you can have a pretty big clue as to what's going on behind the scenes. So, well, here's um, an example. Let, uh, let, let's talk about in 1815 uh, in Europe, continental Europe, Battle of Waterloo, Napoleon Bonaparte faces Lord Wellington. He's defeated in that pincer attack, that Prussian British pincer attack. And the Rothschilds, this is on record, got their horsemen to gallop at full speed, exhausting the horses in a Pony Express, got on a fast cutter corvette, shot across, went in and lied and said, Wellington is defeated, we're going under French rule. Stock markets dropped by close to 99%. Uh, Lord Rothschild started you know, you know, selling it first to make them panic. He bought it all back up and became the head of the British Empire financially. Today, they couldn't really do that. Uh, so instead, they'll put out fake announcements that the announcement says one thing, the fine print says another, but people have learned to get in the fine print quickly. So yeah, there's a lot of that going on. But sometimes they still announce. They announced uh, Russia attacked Georgia, and I wasn't even ready for that three, four years ago. I, I, I went in and I said, they've attacked, and I actually went and searched. It was like, no, Georgia attacked Russia, or that Russian-held area. So that they can still try these bold hoaxes. Uh, right. But uh, look, look. Finish up your point then, a few tips for people about what you're tracking right now or, 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 or you know, ideas you've had, uh, you know, what you're writing about uh, at uh, the site that you blog for. And then uh, also any, um, anything you can tell us about media contacting you. I mean, did they call and say, are you real? Instead of just saying, oh my gosh, it must be a hoax because this guy said the sky's blue. Yeah, um, the first few calls I got, um, I guess I shouldn't mention who called me, but a very, very prestigious newspaper, a magazine called me, uh, and they asked me, aren't you, I mean, I, I had calls from all kinds of magazines, you know, newspapers around the world. Uh, and one called me up saying, hey, uh, are, aren't you the guy from the Yes Man? And I said, what are you talking about? What, Jim Carrey? What are you talking about? So, and I said, uh, no, no, the Yes Man, and the guy, that guy on the, uh, on Dow Chemical. And I said, I have no idea what you're talking about. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I got to be honest, when all this was kicking off and all these newspapers were coming to contact me, I, 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 I couldn't figure out why, because I thought there was nothing controversial about what I said. Um, but going back to your point about tips or anything like that, um, I would say anybody out there who's thinking about buying stocks got to be very careful, because one of the major mistakes anybody can make in a, in a market that's going down, when stocks are getting cheaper, uh, if you go and buy those stocks just because they're cheap, the biggest mistake is you're trying to catch a falling knife because stocks can go all the way to zero. Yeah, just like what happened back in 2008 when many stocks like Lehman Brothers and some over here in the UK collapsed and went to zero. So you've got to be very careful. Don't stand in front of a freight train. OK, so you've you got to make sure the stock is starting to go back up a little bit before you actually buy it. OK, same with commodities. Uh, you want it to find say, its you want it to find its bottom and then crest back up a bit just to be safe as a rule. Exactly, you got to be you got to be very careful of the risks. Well, what about this? Uh, I mean, uh, what about knowing general devaluations in currency globally uh, across yeah. the board? You're going to have a commodity crest across the board, short term, mid term, long term. They can artificially create some dips, raising margin calls and things, in the case of gold and silver. But if you look at the 12-year graph on silver and gold or other commodities, it's really going straight up. So what about a general 
uh, investment uh, in midterm and long term type commodities. Obviously, trying to play things short term uh, would take a lot of time, energy, and expertise. But what about just a general midterm, long term uh, commodities yeah. bet that they're going to go up? Right. Um, well, the first thing I would say is um, whatever investment decision, medium to long term, you got to do, always take care of the risks. Uh, always look at how much you can afford to lose. Don't ever gamble. Okay, but in terms of that, uh, gold and silver, I think they're still pretty good commodities long term. They have good prospects. The only thing about gold and silver is at the moment, they're looking pretty weak. Um, they've come down quite a bit. Uh, gold is now about $1,600 an ounce. Silver, about about 30, 26 uh, region last time I checked. Um, you gotta be careful. Uh, again, those commodities need to, need to gain some strength. They need to show some strength, uh, start going back up again uh, before, you, before you decide to buy them. But if they do, uh, then they can be very good long-term assets uh, to hold. You know, for example, gold, for example, could go back to, to $2,000. Eventually, if it passes, if it passes by two thousand, it could go to four thousand dollars. So yeah, uh, I mean the Chinese. Yeah, but see, generally, uh, I'm looking at a twelve-year graph. If I was to put one on screen. I mean, yeah. if you look at a twelve-year graph, it, it's got. If I give me a document cam shot, folks, I'll show you a twelve-year graph, and maybe later after you leave, I can pull it up and show it to people. But but anybody can just Google a twelve-year graph. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, here's you know 1998, and then let's uh, say so thirteen-year graph, and let's say this is. Um, you know, 2011, and generally, I mean, this is what it's doing. I mean, so I've seen all these dips. I've, I've seen the same things repeated. Yeah. But because overall currencies, because currencies overall are going down, it's a mirror, basically. So global yeah. currencies in a concerted G20 effort are being devalued as part of the inflation tax. So for me, in just basic world history, this is going to go up. Yeah, this, I mean, Alex, this is going right. to go down. Alex, you're right. There is a phrase that says the trend is your friend. Uh, yeah, that the main trend on gold has been up. Absolutely. But you got to also be careful because the trend. You can't just blindly only, trust something, it could change. Yeah, because the trend is your friend only until the end. When that trend changes, and it may, you never know, because it may change. Um, you know, you got to be careful. But that would take uh, a major monetary shift towards stronger currencies. Like, exactly, yeah. let's say gold hits $3,000 in the next few years, and then they come out with a new global currency. It may fail or it may succeed, but I'm going to look for in that new domination then to play a game to drive down commodities. Uh, so, so I see that. But just in the general direction we're going right now, I don't see that. Yeah. I think the interesting thing right now is that dollar, the dollar for once is now looking strong. Uh, as in... Um, that could be because it's been going down for such a long time that it needed a correction. But uh, well, that's because it's going to be right? king of the pile of skulls. You got this global meltdown happening, so yeah, they're running right. to who has the most exactly. nuclear weapons. Exactly. I mean, pretty much all the currencies right now suck. I mean, the, the euro, the pound, uh, even even the Swiss franc. I mean, all these currencies right now they're, they're not doing very well. But that's why the dollar right now is gaining strength. So as you said yourself, you know, the, there's a flight to safety. Uh, or, uh, you know, and um, I think what's going to be interesting right now is going to what's going to happen to the yen, the Japanese yen. That's something I'm looking at right now. Uh, Japanese yen has been in a consolidation now for some time, and it's looking to break out now. Um, 